really good to be here. I want to talk about joining the dots. Before I do that, I'd like to also respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting today, the Woiwurrung, Boonwurrung people, Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Um, I pay my respects to their elders past and present and emerging leaders and any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders who are with us today. Good to have you here and thank you for the welcome, Uncle Dave. I'd also like to acknowledge that we're in Wurundjeri Warring season, wombat season. So we might see wombats out wandering around. It's getting a lot colder. The tree fern hearts are providing good food. And we can hear the lyrebirds calling and see them displaying. I hope you can hear them. I'm grateful for the generations of knowledge and observations that have helped us know that about this Wurundjeri season. I'm grateful for that knowledge being observed and collated and shared. I'm grateful for that being collected and shared with us today. This knowledge, I want to talk a lot today about knowledge. Knowledge is our currency at ARI. And I'm going to think of ARI as Uncle Arthur <laughs> Ryla from now on. I love that. <laughs> it's our currency. It's, um, it's what we create. It's what we store. It's what we share. It's what we provide to people to make decisions about the natural world around us. It's how we contribute to Biodiversity 2037. It, it's what we do. And the people that we have at ARI are deeply knowledgeable, passionate, committed to making a difference in the world for, for, um, and, and to public service. So knowledge is a big part of what I want to focus on today. And if we think about the problems that have been revealed to us in the last months and through the paper as well, knowledge is a big part of that. For example, a lot of them, those problems that have been identified are around things like data. We don't have enough data. We don't have current data. We don't have great targeted ways of monitoring the things that we're learning and doing. These are, these are data and knowledge questions. We also have questions around resourcing. If we could solve that one, we could probably solve the knowledge one. Those things are a kind of a given. We need to pay attention to those things. But the world also has bigger problems. You know, in the global context, we've got a whole lot of other things happening that I think we really need to think about if we want to transform how we and, and achieve the goals that we need to for our society and environment. Um, we need to think about these bigger things and what we're going to do. So we've got these issues around this legacy of environmental degradation going back more than 200 years in, in Victoria. We've got a disengaged community, partly because of increasing urbanisation. We've got this emerging mistrust or erosion of trust in science and in some places in government. We're late to the recognition of the role of Aboriginal people and the notion of country and what it can mean and the leadership there. We are late to recognising that. And we have this wicked problem context around all of these things and joining them all together. So how can we be transformative and make really transformative change in what we need to do? Because we've been chipping away at things for a while now and things aren't getting any better. I think we need to completely reframe our relationships with knowledge and with science and with environment and country. We need to look at things differently. When I think about science and knowledge from an Uncle Arthur Rala perspective, you know, we've, for 52 years now, we've been doing science to inform decision-making around the environment in Victoria. <coughs> All kinds of things. Um, it's great to have Andrew in the room here today because Andrew actually wrote our first technical report. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> and in between then and now, we've done lots of work on all kinds of things. Inbreeding depression of helmet and honey eaters, artificial intelligence um, around all sorts of data from camera traps and audio traps, 
we created a lot of the tools that we've now transformed into modern tools that we use. So we created atlases and indices that have now become the VBA. We created tolerable fire intervals, you know, lots of those tools that we use to understand and make decisions about what we do today. Things around fire, koalas, lead beaters, possums, advice these days into the renewable energy industry that's just, you know, exploding across this state. So lots of things that we're involved in, but it's not okay to just do that science and have it sit in a report on a shelf. Andrew again, I didn't know Andrew was gonna be here. He's like a feature person today. But we, Andrew's led this work and we have thought deeply about how do we actually transform that science into impact? What is the pathway to impact? How do we get from a set of environmental problems to positive environmental change on the ground? There are lots of levers and intersects here that we really need to think about to ensure that the science that we do makes a difference, that the science that we do matters and has impact. So in thinking all about this, we've identified there are actually four key enablers. Now this looks simple, and you might read that, that and think, oh yeah, sure, I kind of knew that. But there's a lot under each of these words. These words are really important. The quality of our engagement and relationships and the enduring nature of those. The credibility and reputation that we hold, so people trust the science that we do, and they come to us for the science that we do that we're providing relevant, applicable knowledge. It's targeted, it's answering the right questions. And that we're effectively communicating it and sharing it. So not just for us at Arthur Rala, but everyone who's generating science and wanting to share it. These are really important things that we need to address. And in thinking about science and knowledge, what is knowledge? What do we mean when we're talking about the knowledge that we need, the science that we need, in the contemporary way that we work with the environment in Victoria? Uncle Dave and others have already said that we need to grow and strengthen our partnerships with traditional owners and Aboriginal organisations in this country. We've got long-standing relationships with some and we're doing some exciting and amazing work, including with Gundaj Mahara and, and others work on eels, turtles, mussels, plants, all sorts of things. This is fabulous work and I'm really proud of it. But we need to deepen how this is done. We need to better connect our knowledge systems. We need to make this more business than usual rather than a subset of what we do. This is part of how we need to operate into the future in a genuine partnership way. I'm really excited about this work. So. We're working with Maddie Miller, and great to see Mick McCarthy here today. Mick, myself, and Kath Williams are all co-supervisors of Maddie um, with Melbourne Uni. Maddie is exploring how do we do this? How do we meaningfully bring together different ways of knowing place? How do we do that in a way that respects the integrity of each and creates something new and powerful and amazing that transforms us into a new space? And how do we use storying as a method to do that? I'm excited about that and I want to see it feeding pretty much into everything else that we do. Another kind of science, behaviour change. Now, Arthur Ryler Institute has this massive history and legacy around ecological research, but increasingly we're exploring behaviour change. Now, if you think about Biodiversity 2037, one of its goals is that Victorians will value nature. It's about behaviour change, right? It's about getting people to value, connect and act for nature in meaningful ways. How are we going to do that? Like, I'm sure everyone in this room would have ideas about what we might do, but how do we do that in an impactful way that is evidence-based? So we work with Monash and Behaviour Works and Icon Science at RMIT and others to get evidence into this. We've been surveying the population across Victoria for three, now, three years now to better understand where we're at. Who in Victoria is connected and acting for nature? 
How do they do that? What are they doing? When are they doing it? Why and why not? How do we measure connection? Which actions do we want to encourage people to do? So we're doing all of this work with an evidence base to inform not just what we do, but what our partners do as well. And we've fed that evidence into things like the annual Nature Festival. And the beauty of the Nature Festival is not just that it gets people to connect and act for nature, but that, that it is a demonstration of collective action and collective impact. And my question is, what shall we do next? What's the next thing that we apply the behaviour change lens and the collective impact lens to make a difference? So I want to join the dots. I want to join up the different sciences, the different knowledges, how we tell the stories, how we have impact, and how we work together for collective impact and connect the sector. Because biodiversity is in trouble. We need all hands on deck. We need to join things up, more partnerships, more participation, more democratisation of science by building citizen science. We need greater science, trust and valuing and impact. We need to bring together those different knowledges and have a mainstreaming of reciprocity of our relationship with nature. Get behaviour change science linking in with our ecological sciences and others. Join those dots. I'd love to see a nature knowledge network. And we need to tell the stories in a way that celebrates the successes, is evidence-based, is people-centred and trauma-sensitive, building hope and agency. To borrow the theme from National Reconciliation Week, be brave, everyone here, be brave, make change. Because there's that classic quote that you know, everyone uses, if not now, when? And if not us, who? It's the people in this room that we can make this transformative difference. <laughs>